Hi there, this is Steven Gonzalez. How are you doing today? In the previous video, we recorded a media item, and now it's time to save our work and get it ready for delivery to the client. And so working with projects, that's what's next on Reaper for Voice Talent. In this video, we're going to be looking at saving projects within Reaper and everything that goes with it, including file organization. And then we're going to be looking at the render window and wildcards. Now, if this is your first time within this video, especially if this is your first time within Reaper for Voice Talent, do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to hit that notification bell setting it to all, and watch this video all the way through, in fact, multiple times because it's so dense with a lot of information. And as always, if you have comments or questions, please drop them in the comment section below and I'll be able to get to them as soon as I can. And with that, without further ado, let's get started. Here we have the project that we were working in in the previous video. And you see in the Windows File Explorer what it looks like physically. There you have the WAV file and its repeaks file. And remember that the repeaks file is meant to allow Reaper to show the WAV file in that ubiquitous seismographic waveform that almost every DAW does. Well, this is okay file organization, but we can do better than this. And using, of all things, the Reaper save process, we can actually do that. Now, to save a project, we can do one of two things. We can either go to File and say Save Project, or we can go Control S. Either way, we're greeted with this window. And let's take a look at the top of it, first of all, because as it says here, it says Reaper Media. This is what Reaper calls the default project folder. And that's the way I will be referring to it, the default project folder, because there are ways to change that default project folder reference. So inside file name, we're going to actually give it the project name. And in this case, let's say this test one, two, three. Create subdirectory for project. Under the default project directory, there will be a new subdirectory called test123 that will be generated, and everything to do with that project will be put into that subdirectory. Move all media into project directory. Also, check it. Remember in the global project settings video, we set up the default media files location. We set it to, say, media or WAV files or something like that. Well, what's going to end up happening is the following. Under the default project folder, there will be a directory called test123 that will be generated. As I said before, everything will be put into there. Inside that folder, there will be a subdirectory called media that will be generated, and the WAV file and repeaks files, in other words, the media files, will be placed into it. Now, let's talk about copy rather than move. This is something like for room tone, or if you're a podcaster, if you're using the same intro video, that type of thing, you really want to copy on your very first save rather than move because it will move those, those media files, the MP4s or the MOVs or the WAV file that's your room tone or whatever it happens to be. Reaper will move it. So for the very first save, check this box. And then after that, you can uncheck it and everything will be fine. In our case, we don't need anything like that, so we'll keep it unchecked. So we hit Save. And now let's take a look to see what it looks like within the Windows File Explorer. Here you see that the WAV file and the Repeaks file are no longer there. They have been moved. Instead, what we have is this generated project folder called Test123. Now inside Test123, we have the .rpp file, which is the control file. This tells Reaper how to look at the media files and what to do with them. Processing, how they're edited, all this good stuff, quote unquote edited. Then we have the media subdirectory that was set up in the global project settings. And inside there, we finally see the media files, the WAV file and that repeats file. This is what I'm talking about file organization, but we're not done yet. Let's go back to the project folder and we'll see some more changes as this video continues. Let's talk about rendering this thing, turning it into a final product file that we can turn in to our client. Now, the very first thing we must do is determine where we're going to put these rendered files. Just like the media files, there are three places that we can put these things. And we can go to Options and Preferences. And under General, under Paths, we have Default Render Path. If we keep it blank, 
then the render file itself will be contained in the project folder itself, not under any subdirectory, just with the .rpp. We could do something like this, in which case we tell Reaper to put all the rendered product into a centralized directory. Again, that's not really good file organization. Instead, we'll do something similar that we did with the media files and say, just create a subdirectory under the project directory and call it renders. And we hit apply, we hit okay, and we're done with that. Now let's take a look at the render project window. We can get to it in one of two ways. We can go file and say render, or we can go control alt R. Either way, we're greeted with this window. This is a wonderful window. It's got lots of stuff, lots of tweaks that we can do with it. And in the course, I'll show you more about this. Let's go from the top and go down to the bottom and tweak what we need to tweak for now. First of all, the tail. Let's not have a tail. The purpose of this tail is for music, the effects, like for reverb and delay and such things like that, for it to taper off. But in voiceover, we don't need this. So we uncheck it. Output, the directory plus the file name equals the render to path. And you'll see that there's nothing in the directory, but yet there's all this stuff here. Well, that was what we just set up. We said under the project directory, we're going to have a folder called renders. And under renders, that's where our final product is going to go. Right now, let's talk about wildcards. This has to do with file names. Okay, let's undo this for a second and you see that it's .mp3 just disappeared here. Let's click on wildcards. We have all of these variables and you can tell it's a variable because they have dollar signs next to them. If you want what we just had, then under project information, we can do dollar sign project and we have exactly what we had before. Remember in the global project settings video, we put our name under the notes tab in that author input line. Well, this is where we can use it. We can say underscore and we hit wildcards, project information, author. And there's our name right there. This is how we can put our name into things like audition files that we turn into other people. Now, sample rate, as long as the sample rate is equal to or less than what we recorded, then we're good. Remember, there are three sample rates that are accepted, 48, 44.1, and 96. For now, like we said before, we're going to keep it at 48 because we were going to record and turn in in 48K. Channels, stereo. If you're a podcaster and if you have music beds or if you want to kind of pan your participants, let's say you have the host in your left ear a little bit and the guest in the right ear a little bit, you want stereo audiobooks and e-learning especially, those types of things are things that you're going to be turning in to the client for further processing. You really want it mono. And in this case, we're going to change it to mono. Now let's come down to the primary and secondary output format. Here is something that is new within Reaper 6. This is incredible. Let's say that we want the primary output format to be WAVE, but the secondary output to be MP3. Well, we can change this format to WAVE. Um, bit depth of 24 bit PCM is wonderful. Again, no markers and regions unless they ask for them. And that takes care of the wave. Now let's take a look at the secondary one. We can go to MP3. Again, the bit rate should be 192 CBR. And that looks good. Here is what the project looks like right now. Watch what happens whenever I render this thing. Oh, and by the way, it says two files here, right? If we click on this, it says, I'm going to generate test123 underscore Stephen Gonzalez dot wave and dot mp3. And it shows you how long each one of those media files are. Very, very cool. So let's hit apply and let's click the render two files and see what happens. Here we have the render window and inside of it, you see exactly what's happening to the project and the final waveform, if you will, as well as this peak. Now we can do one of three things here. We can either launch the file and the media player, whether it's VLC or Windows Media Player or whatever it happens to be, will launch and you'll be able to hear it. You can show it in the Explorer, which is what exactly we're going to be doing in just a second. Or we can just close out these two windows. When you close this window after it's done, then it's going to close out also the render to file window. Now, notice in the title bar here how long it took for it 
to render. This is something that can be important for long-form narrators, like audiobook narrators or e-learning narrators, because this can give you, over time, a sense of how long it's going to take for a project to render. Very, very important information here. So let's close this, and we're going to close the Render to File window at the same time. And now let's go to the Windows File Explorer and see what happened to our project. Notice that there is now a new folder called Renders. And inside Renders, we have the MP3 and the WAV file ready to be turned in. This is what I'm talking about, file organization. It is such an important aspect of being a voice talent. It cannot be overstated. The link to the Windows-centric playlist is in the description below. And be on the lookout for the Reaper for Voice Talent course, where we'll take a deeper dive into how to set up Reaper for possible recording, editing, and processing workflows. And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And this is Stephen Gonzalez from Stephen Gonzalez VoiceOvers, wishing you all the best, and you have a wonderful and wonder-filled day.